Back to you, Thank Steve. you, Toby. Appreciate that. That was great information. Uh, let me jump in and uh, kind of highlight Aruba Fabric Composer and this solution for you. So uh, hopefully everybody's fully aware of Aruba Fabric Composer. This is our primary data center orchestration tool. Uh, it really helps us to orchestrate and automate the entire data center fabric, building up these fabrics within minutes versus hours. Um, of course, uh, Aruba Fabric Composer provides a rich uh, ecosystem with integrations, for example, into vSphere, uh, VMware, uh, ILO Amplifier Pack, Nutanix, SimpliVity, NetEdit even, but also now with Pensando. So we can integrate Pensando Services Manager into Aruba Fabric Composer. So now we'll be able to actually deploy our data center fabric using Aruba Fabric Composer, but we'll also be able to leverage those APIs that Toby was talking about to leverage uh, configuring uh, the Pensando Services Manager in turn, which will then use those APIs to manage the CX-10,000 switches. So AFC is intended to be the front end tool that most of the customers will use to uh, you know, discover and automate and actually build out these policies within the solution. In the back end, uh, AFC is going to be talking to the Pensando Services Manager, which then in turn talks to the Aruba CX-10,000 switches and makes sure that those are programmed properly. Uh, taking a look at uh, Aruba Fabric Composer dashboard, and we'll get a little bit more uh, look at this with uh, Steve Bartlett's uh, demo. Uh, everybody hopefully is familiar with the main dashboard with an Aruba Fabric Composer, but we are also building out a new distributed services workflow in the upper right now, where you can actually just simply follow the steps throughout the distributed services workflow, integrate your Pensando Services Manager into the solution, uh, configure the various switch associations and VRFs, and then go on to configure the actual various policies that you want to actually get inspected by those uh, Pensando Service Manager chests. Um, so this is going to be uh, Aruba Fabric Composer 6.2. So 6.2 is the version that's going to be providing support for the uh, CX-10,000 and the distributed services architecture. Um, of course, like I said, this is really intended to be that single pane of glass orchestration. And we can see on the right, you know, the various features that will be available uh, at 6.2. So the Pensando PSM integration, as well as Pensando policy orchestration. Um, as well as even ACL orchestration within that policy, uh, Pensando Services Manager. Um, and of course, the orchestration uh, is based on micro segmentation uh, within the vSphere environment. Um, we're going to be providing uh, some enhanced, improved telemetry capabilities within AFC. Uh, in fact, live telemetry for the uh, distributed services switch and the services module. Uh, there's going to be some enhanced firewall logging configurations, uh, as well as uh, snapshots and rollbacks uh, for the switch configurations, and even uh, VSX live upgrades, all launched directly from uh, AFC. In fact, I have a, a, a screenshot of some of the telemetry uh, uh, features being added into the 6.2 version. Um, so here we can see here that we're actually looking at the uh, various uh, distributed services modules within these uh, CX10K switches and actually getting uh, a lot of information with regards to TX error percent, at least for the, uh, the uh, chosen one here. But you can see in the lower left all the various uh, types of uh, transmit and receive type counters that we can choose with the new 6.2 version. Um, so actually taking a look a little bit closer, let's take a look at the, uh, the, the packet flows within these types of environments. So this is, a, this is our CX10K switch on the right here. Um, we've got a native IPv4 packet, which is ingressing the front panel ports. And based on those programmed uh, firewall policy rules, the Trident 3 will send a packet to uh, the distributed services module with a Q and Q tag. Um, so that packet is going to be sent with an inner VLAN as the front panel port identifier, uh, and then, of course, an outer VLAN as the incoming .1Q tag. 
And uh, the distributed service module, it identifies this traffic from the front panel since the inner VLAN is not 2048 and the packet is Q and Q tagged. And then at that point, it'll apply this egress policy. Uh, the distributed service module will then send back that Q and Q packet to the Trident 3. And that packet is sent with the uh, inner VLAN as that front panel port identifier and uh, an outer VLAN as the incoming dot one Q tag. And then at that point, the Trident 3 is going to perform the VXLAN encapsulation and it's going to forward uh, based on the decisions that uh, it needs to to send that packet to the proper port. Uh, taking a look at uh, a fabric to the front panel port type workflow. So this is from like the spine switches to our front panel ports. A VXLAN packet is going to ingress the switch. Um, uh, the Trident 3 is going to decapsulate that packet and the distributed services module will perform uh, a policy evaluation on that decapsed packet. Um, for a layer 2 VNI case, that packet is going to be sent with that inner VLAN of 2048 and an outer VLAN equals the VLAN which was mapped to that VNI. For a, for a layer 3 VNI case, the packet is sent with just a single tag, so no Q and Q, and then that uh, VLAN tag is the destination VLAN uh, for that post-routed packet. The distributed service module will identify this as traffic from the fabric based on either that inner VLAN or, of course, that single tagged packet, and it will apply an ingress policy to that. Um, and then that distributed service module will send back uh, Q and Q. Uh, and again, for like layer two VNI or layer three VNI cases, that inner VLAN uh, will be 2048 and the outer VLAN will be that same that was used in step two. And then finally, of course, that native packet is gonna be forwarded to the, uh, to the appropriate port. Uh, VSX. So VSX is a critical part of our data center solutions when we're deploying our switches out in these fabrics. Um, and so it's kind of important that we understand the, uh, the flow tables and how VSX syncs between these uh, two switches. So, of course, when we've got these two switches in a VSX scenario, we want to avoid, you know, a number of potential problems. So asymmetric traffic, right? So uh, in the VSX scenario, there's always a possibility of the forward and reverse packets arriving at different CX switches. And so, of course, that's, you know, a great example of why we want to make sure that the flow tables within these DSM uh, ASICs are synced so that the policies uh, aren't different uh, on each uh, uh, for ingress coming or, uh, you know, exiting this VSX uh, stack. Um, packet flows oftentimes will shift from one CX to another due to various things like routing hash changes in the spine. Um, and of course, the fin and rest will be seen only by one CX uh, 10,000. So that that would be a mismatch with regards to the idle timeouts. Um, and similarly, due to, uh, you know, a traffic pattern in the flow, for example, like a UDP flow that that mostly has a unidirectional traffic, one CX may actually age out those flow entries faster than the other. So we want to ensure that these CX switches uh, are synced with regards to these flow tables so that we don't cause any sort of traffic disruption. Taking a look at the uh, workflow on VSX syncing these, uh, these packets. So let's say in this example here, a packet from the host goes northbound and it reaches that uh, distributed service switch one and that gets routed to the distributed service module one, the first one on the left. Um, the distributed services module that just saw this first packet uh, is going to be evaluated for the policy, but the, the flow installation of that packet, it's not finished there. It's actually going to send that packet encapsulated in another packet. So this is going to be UDP 11362 with VLAN identifier 4094, and it's going to send that to the other distributed services switch, and it'll sync that with the DSM-1. So when that distributed services switch has received that packet, it'll just punt it up to the uh, distributed service module, which will look into that inner packet instead of the outer packet. Um, and then that flow entry is gonna be programmed into that P4 pipeline. Um, that distributed services switch two is gonna send that packet back to DSS one. So this uh, initial switch after it installs that flow into the pipeline. And once that initial switch receives that packet back, then it's gonna send it to the software and it'll actually install the flow into the P4 pipeline 
on that switch too. And of course, that's when the forward uh, and drop type decisions based on the policy valuations is done. Taking another uh, look at the policy flow overview. So there's, there's a concept of egress traffic and ingress traffic. And this is kind of important for us to, uh, to wrap our heads around. So when we're talking about egress traffic with regards to the distributed services module, that's gonna be traffic that the workload, so the host or the servers is actually sending into the fabric. Ingress traffic is actually traffic that that workload is actually consuming. So that's traffic actually going down to the servers. Um, there's going to be a, a new persona CLI config option on the CX 10,000s called access and uplinks. And so you can see in the lower right, we've got port 1148 is by default set to a persona access. So all the 1, 10, 25 gig front facing ports are all gonna have a default persona access. And then the 100 gig uplinks will have a persona uplink uh, uh, persona applied to them. So we can see here that all traffic leaving the workload and host and entering the switch from these front facing ports will be uh, subject to that access persona. And then of course, all traffic destined to the workload entering the switch from you know, our 100 gig uplinks, that's gonna be subject to the uplink persona. Kind of taking a, a little bit closer look again at the concept of egress and ingress. So here we have a simple example where we just have a single switch on the far right. We have traffic that's entering that switch from the host. And it, because that traffic is entering from the host or it's exiting the host, uh, it's egress traffic from the host. That traffic, if we want to inspect it at that layer, we would call it, we would apply that to an egress traffic rule. The DSM will inspect that traffic, and then uh, if the traffic's okay to forward, it will go ahead and forward it off to the destination uh, target host. Very similar here, of course, except now we're simply just uh, deploying across a uh, leaf and spine scenario or uh, access and core scenario. So if I want to inspect traffic as it's leaving that host, uh, host A in this example, that would be a rule that would be an egress traffic rule. So egress traffic would get sent and punted over to the distributed services module on the DSS-1. And then if that traffic is okay to continue forwarding, DSS-1 will continue forwarding that traffic. Now on the receiving side, we could also have a rule on the receiving side too, on that receiving switch, uh, as the traffic is leaving the switch and entering in the destination host E, uh, but that traffic would be subject to ingress rule because the traffic is ingressing host E. And uh, very, very similar here, the concepts are all the same. We're just simply in this example, routing between different VLANs and we've got a couple flows here. But again, traffic leaving our hosts or egressing our host is subject to egress rules and traffic after it's been routed across the fabric and coming back into the destination host would be subject to ingress type rules. Um, and this is a, a, an example here where we have a third party access switch in the environment. So this switch doesn't have you know, a DSM uh, module within the switch for this firewall functionality. So this switch is going to be simply sending traffic into the fabric um, the receiving switch, of course, this is a great example for why we would do ingress traffic rules because this receiving switch is receiving this traffic, but we would want to inspect this traffic as the traffic is ingressing host B here and apply any sort of policy rules to that if need be. <clears throat> and very, very similar uh, with regards to uh, a VXLAN type solution. So in this example, all of the host, all the switches at the top of rack here are acting as VTEPs. We're routing this within a VXLAN environment, but those egress and ingress traffic rules still apply even in this type of solution. So traffic from host A enters the first switch. If I want to apply this rule at that point in level, I would use the egress traffic destination. That traffic would get inspected, and if it passes inspection, it would get forwarded on. And then, of course, that's when it's going to get encapsulated by VXLAN and sent across the uh, spine and the fabric until it gets to the other destination port where it will be decapsulated. 
And then that's another point in the uh, flow where we have an opportunity to inspect the traffic. But as because the traffic is ingressing the destination server, that traffic is is subject to ingress rules. <clears throat> 